So I've got a couple of Raspberry Pis here. Um, each of them has a 2.4 gigahertz transceiver on it. Uh, and this one has a GPS receiver on it so that I can read the GPS location of this Raspberry Pi and then use a the transceiver to transmit this location from here onto this Raspberry Pi. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll go into the field and I'll place this Raspberry Pi in a location and then I'll use this uh, Raspberry Pi to uh, walk around and, and get the range uh, that this can the, the, these transceivers can actually transmit over because these are the, these are the ones with a long aerial. So you, these are also the same device but with just like a, a small aerial on the PCB. But I want to know how far these ones with the with the actual large antenna can actually transmit and receive. So I'll do the actual range test in my next video uh, where I actually go into the field and, and get the data. Um, and when I get the data, um, when I bring it back. Um, what I can do is I, I should have it in a format where I can upload it to Google Maps and you'll be able to see on Google Maps uh, all the points at which uh, the GPS signal was transmitted to this device. And so you'll be able to get a good idea of uh, how far the actual device can transmit. But in this video, um, I just want to talk about the circuit I've got. I've just got a simple interfacing circuit. Uh, go over the source code and do a demonstration of actually on, on my uh, desk sending, receiving GPS information and sending it from one place to the other place uh, and then just talk about the software really. So both of these interface boards are exactly the same. I've got a little LED on here to indicate uh, whether the rece reception of the GPS data is valid uh, and whether or not it's communicating properly between the two boards. Apart from that, the, the PCBs just have a series of resistors just to limit any current going between the, the actual devices and the Raspberry Pi, just in case um, it, uh, pins uh, are configured accidentally to conflict. So these small devices and the large devices, they're pin compatible. So if I unplug uh, this one from here, I can that this one will just plug in and operate exactly the same. No difference needs to be made to the software at all. Like I say, these two boards are the same, so I could unplug this GPS receiver and plug it into this connector on this board, and it would operate exactly the same. We've got a connection to both of these Raspberry Pis. Uh, if I look in the directory where the source code is, I've got a series of files. So I've written here um, an NSPI interface, um, which just uh, allows me to communicate with the uh, transceiver device. Uh, and as I go down, uh, this one is uh, an interface for the actual transceiver device, which is an RF24L01. Uh, and so that's that's the interface I use to communicate with that. Uh, and then I've got a, a file where I've got the interface to the GPS module. And th there's two uh, front end um, programs, one which is to transmit the signals. So uh, this program will receive a GPS signal from the module, GPS module. Um, and put it into a data packet which it sends over the transceiver uh, and then this other program which runs on the other Raspberry Pi uh, it will receive that data uh, it will convert it into something which is Google Maps compatible uh, and then it will save it into a log file so on this Raspberry Pi I'll set it up to be a trans transmitter because this is the one with the GPS module on it and at the top of the output yeah, I've got some status information about the transceiver device. And it just shows me how it's configured, how I've set up the the addresses um, and the RF channel. So I've got it sending at one megabit per second, uh, which is the slower of the speeds that it can do, because it can either do one megabit or two megabit per second. Uh, the channel it's transmitting on uh, and summary information about the the data packets. Now I'm only uh, outputting this at the top, but you could you could output this information at any any point, just because it calls just this function and it then displays it. Uh, and at the minute, because there's no there's no receiving uh, device active, so this um, max RT is maximum errors in transmitting. So if I go onto the next tab, so this is my uh, receiving device. And if on here I start up the receiver, and again at the top it just uh, displays some information about the way it's configured. Uh, and then here it's saying data ready because it's receiving data. 
So if I go back to this other display, so these are the errors here, but now it's showing data sent. So it's actually transmitting the GPS information between the two devices. And on the third tab, uh, so I've got, this is the on the second tab, the receiver, but on the third tab, this is a receiver device as well, but the log directory. And if I look in here, uh, you see the file, this is the uh, this is where I'm logging the information which I'll actually upload to Google to show on Google Maps. Uh, but you'll see that this is this file is growing. And I, I won't show you the information here at the minute because it's just my static location. But when in my next video when I do the range testing, I'll actually go through the, this file uh, and and describe what's in it. And I'll also upload it to Google and show on Google Maps. Uh, the different areas uh, that the the points which are, have been measured and then from that I'll be able to calculate the the longest range that I've managed to achieve on the transmission and reception of this um, data. So I'll go over the source code. Um, so this first tab is RPI SPI which is just an SPI interface. So there is a, an SPI Python interface that's been provided on the Raspberry Pi but I haven't managed to get that to work um, I don't know if I'm just not using it right or if it's if there's an issue with it, but I never got managed to get the chip select to work properly. Um, but there's not much code to this. There's only a, it's only this. This is this is all that I was required to actually communicate on SPI by manually um, manipulating the pins. So at the top, I'm defining which pins I'm using, uh, the word size. So I'm sending bytes of information. Uh, just a very short clock period, just to make sure that um, I think without the clock period, the Raspberry Pi is slow enough at the minute that it wouldn't be an issue. But as Raspberry Pi is getting quicker and quicker, it's worth putting a little clock period in there just to make sure that it's slow enough that it doesn't overwhelm any of the modules which I'm communicating with. So at the top, I'm just initializing the GPIO with a, a GPIO in it um, routine. And then there's just one, one other routine which is send and receive because with SBI, when you send a bit, it simultaneously receives a bit at the same time. So you only need one function to send and receive. And all it does is take a data word which you want to transmit. Uh, and it just goes through each of the bits uh, and puts the, that, that bit on the output. And at, that, at the same time, it uh, reads, reads a bit um, back in. Uh, so here it receives a bit and then adds it to the data word which is going to return down at the bottom. So it's a very simple routine. Uh, there's not much to it at all. So this is the GPS interface. And the GPS interface, it actually turns out it's a very simple thing to do. Uh, talk to this GPS module. Now I thought this was going to be the harder of the two modules to talk to, but actually it's, it's a lot simpler than I thought. Because all you have to do is open the uh, communication to the device and it's using a UART interface. Uh, so you just open the serial communication and then you read the data and that's as simple as it is and then you do whatever you want with the data that comes back. Uh, so at the top of this file I've got this uh, arbitrary kind of buffer size so when I'm reading the serial data I'm just I'm reading a buffer size of a maximum of 64k but actually the data is actually a lot less than that it's probably less than a k or, or maybe it's around about 1k of information that comes back per, per reading. Um, so this is kind of an arbitrary thing which I'm just putting into the read statement. Uh, and then I've got information about the the some of the structures and, and the positions of data in the structures which come back from the uh, GPS module. So the GPS module it can handle s several different protocols, uh, but it's set up by default to read a particular protocol, and that protocol is all that I've needed. So I haven't had to write any configuration to this device. So I think that you can write some configuration information to this GPS module, but I'm just using it in standard form as it comes out of the box. And I'm just opening up the uh, UART port to it and reading it. Uh, so um, one of the, the pieces of information I'm reading is the satellite positions. So until you get a fix on the satellites, uh, you're not going to get any valid data back. So rather than just display nothing, what I'm going to do is display on the screen uh, a list of the satellites it's acquired so far. So you can see it acquiring the satellites. And then once it's getting the valid data, I don't have to display that. I just display that I've got valid data, I'm sending it to the other device and the other device can then display that it's received it or not. Uh, so down, so this is the structure I'm, which I'm gonna put into in this program for my own use, uh, just to make it nice and easy for me to use any data which comes back. 
So I'm going to sort out the data um, from a protocol which comes back and put it into a list which is has these elements in it. And this is the only uh, piece of information which comes back from the GPS device. So GPIMC uh, and the MC I think means most common data. So there's several different types of data which come back, but they've summarized one of them into like this RMC command or, or set of data which is uh, which is all I really needed. So I don't need to look at anything else apart from the, the satellite one where I get the satellite acquisition stuff. Uh, and in here, all I'm doing is I'm mapping the, the fields in that data into the list data the which, which I'm going to have here, uh, which I'm going to use in my program. So I can do like a mapping and then just use my own data structure with the data it's got. Uh, so it's very simple so the opening to gps connection is just opening a serial port to the gps it's as simple as that and then reading the data is just as simple as reading from that serial port uh, and then acquiring it now on the actual module the module there's a pin which uh, seemed to have a one second pulse on it i thought it was just like an accurate one second pulse but actually i think it's to generate an interrupt where it will synchronize um it producing the data uh, with that one second pulse so you can actually read the data and get a full set of data. I didn't use that, but if I was to redo this, I would actually use that pin to generate an interrupt to read the data. So sometimes when I'm reading the data, you get like half a set of data and I'm just manually resynchronizing here by putting a little one tenth of a second delay in if I, if I don't uh, get a full set of data. Uh, so I shouldn't really have to do that. This This is just because I didn't you uh, make use of that pin um, but if you make use of that pin really we need to do is read, read the buffer and then um, I've got so when I get satellite data so this is this is a, the routine which uh, gets this GSV um, data type which is, the, which is the other data type which tells you the satellites in, in view uh, and so before it's acquiring proper sets of data all, all, all this is doing is is gathering the information I need from that data structure uh, and put it into like a little simple data structure, which all I'm going to do is use it to dis display which satellites are in view whilst it's acquiring the satellites. And then this display satellite data just takes that data, which I've got from the previous function, uh, and it just tabulates it into like a, a three column um, display so that I can display that whilst it's acquiring the data. Um, and then this GPS code decode, which is the only other function in this in this um, particular piece of the source code, uh, it just this maps from the from the data which I'm getting back, which I'm going to use that the most common data. It maps it from the, that structure into my structure, so it just goes through, reads the if I scroll back up. It this it just reads this GPIMC data, and it goes through it goes through these fields. Uh, and where it finds uh, a field which I want, which is say time, it then put, places that into my, into a list of time uh, field zero, and then status. Uh, oh, that's just to tell me if if um, the the status of the of the um, actual data is valid or not. So I use that, and then say latitude, it puts it in up here at element five. So it just maps into into my data structure. So this next file handles the communication with the transceiver, the RF24L01. Um, and uh, when I started out, I thought that this was going to be the simpler of the two to two modules to actually communicate with, but actually turned out to be a more complicated. And uh, I've thought then that maybe I just implement the things which I need to and, and ignore everything else. But it turns out that actually I've implemented most of it. There's a few things which aren't implemented in here, but um, it's not not that much. Um, that's not implemented. So in here, I've, I've defined the address which you communicate on. Uh, so there's two there's two things in relation to this. There's the RF channel, which is the frequency at which it transmits and receives. And then within that channel, uh, you can actually have more than one transceiver talking on that channel, but with different addresses, so they can interleave. Um, so this is kind of the address which defines uh, the the channels of uh, the devices which are actually communicating as opposed to the the radio frequency itself 
uh, and then I define the GPIO pins, um, which I'm being used. So the SPI pins I've defined in the SPI interface, but here is just the specific to this device uh, that it generates interrupts uh, so that when it transmits a packet, it'll tell you it's transmitted the packet and when it receives a packet, it'll tell you it's received a packet. Or if it fails to transmit a packet, uh, it will tell you it will generate an inter interrupt for failing to transmit uh, or failing to receive a packet. So if it received a packet, but actually the contents doesn't uh, conform to the checksum of, of that packet, then it will uh, generate an error and it give you the interrupt saying it's failed to receive that packet as well. Uh, I'm going to go over briefly this because um, to get more information, take a look at the data sheet. But because there's, it's quite a complex um, thing, it would take hours to actually go over the, actually in detail uh, how this thing communicates. Uh, but they, these are the, the SPI commands which you can send it to, 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 to th do things like read registers or write registers or set receive or read receive payloads, I should say, or or set write payloads. Um, so they're the SPI commands that, you, that the actual device will recognise. And then when you when you actually communicate, and most of the communication is reading and writing registers. And so these are all defines um, for the registers which you can read and write to and doing things like this, setting the communication speed or the, um, the transmit um, power, or, uh, doing things like that. So there's quite a bit of stuff uh, you can do with the registers, uh, but to go over that would take hours. And uh, so it's coming down to the functions now. So do an initialization. I initialize the SPI device because that's that's how I'm going to communicate with this device. And uh, the, then I set up the two GPI pins, uh, one's for the interrupts and one's for this CSN pin, which is uh, when you turn on or off the radio. So if if this is off, or then the actual pa the device is in low power mode, but as soon as you turn this on, it goes into whichever mode you've set, either transmit or receive. Uh, and I've got this this overall send command, which um, this sends information to the SPI through the SPI device to the module, uh, and that's the most basic command. So then I've sort of made that a bit more complex by saying read register and write register, and so these both send command so when I've got a read register you set up um, into the into a command string what you want to read when you want to read and how many bytes it of data it has to read uh, and so, same with the write register uh, and then you can do things like flush the buffers um, and what you do first of all is you configure the device so this is this does a basic configuration uh, so I do this on both the transmitter and the receiver, and it just goes through, sets up the addresses for the for the device. It just does the basic um, initialization of the device, and then after that, you tell it you configure either whether it's going to be a transmitter or a receiver, and they can both do both if you wanted. They you know they can, one can either one could do a transmit or a receive, uh, but the way that this application is working at this minute is one of them just uh, receive, uh, gets the GPS information, transmits it to the other, and the other one just receives it. So one's just a transmitter and one's a receiver. But you could go both ways if you wanted to go both ways. And also you could uh, transmit and receive not just between these devices, but between many devices. In fact, really, you could have as many devices as you wanted to be talking between them. Uh, and then I've got configure off. So, so you configure it as a receiver or a transmitter, or if you configure it off, then it goes into low power mode and turns the radio off uh, and doesn't actually then do, do anything. And I've got a way of resetting um, just to make sure it's in a, a consistent state. Um, because I'm using interrupts to fit, to tell me when, I, when something's been transmitted or when something's been received, um, if, if it's in a state where an interrupt has been flagged and I start trying to do something, uh, it won't reflag that interrupt, so you need to. Re so if I put it in a consistent state where it's re it's resetting all the in these interrupt flags, then I know that I'll get an interrupt, and, it, and the program won't just sit there doing nothing, thinking it's flagged an interrupt when it hasn't. Um, uh, uh, in the actual programs, you'll see I call this get interrupt flags to tell me uh, what flags of uh, interrupts have actually occurred, and this also 
then resets the flags as well because if a flag hasn't been reset it won't regenerate the info um it won't regenerate an interrupt for that particular event and so therefore the program will just stop operating and not do anything more so when handling interrupts you have to be careful about doing these things because if you don't reset the flags when you need to then your program will just stop operating <laughs> and it, it'll think it's not receiving flags when it's just because the flags haven't been reset uh, then i've got a simple uh function to, to send data so, so to transmit data and then this uh, function gets data so the receiver will call this to get the one once it's been flagged once it's received an interrupt the data is ready to be received uh you can then call this and get the actual data itself uh and also then at the end i've just got a few functions which um get summaries of the status of the registers of certain you know certain registers like the uh, transmit addresses and receive addresses and and any packet of failures and things like that so you can just get the status of the device display on the screen this is more for debugging really than anything else uh so uh, so here, here's the one that gets the addresses and then at the end gets the radio frequency information like um the speed and the the power so those those three functions are quite handy just to see what state the, the device is in especially if you're having issues with the transmission and receiving of information so this is the receive application and I've on that um on the PCB which I've made I've got a little bright color LED so I can show the state uh whether or not the um say for the example the transmitter is actually uh, managing tra to transmit information or whether it's actually receiving GPS information. So this is when I go out into the field. I don't need the display to be connected to the device. So I should be able to get all the information, all the information about the state of the devices, uh, which I need from these the color of these LEDs. So all green means okay, the transmitter is receiving GPS information and uh, actually managing to send it successfully. And on the receiver, the green will mean it's receiving the information successfully and it's receiving it regularly as well. Whereas a red would mean, um, well, uh, a solid red means that it's not getting any GPS information and so therefore not transmitting either. A flashing red on the transmitter means it's getting the GPS information but not succeeding in transmitting it to the receiver. And a red on the receiver means that it hasn't received information within the past um, number of seconds. I think it was set to five seconds. Uh, or, or the information it's receiving is erroneous. Um, I set up the RF channel which I'm going to use. So I've put that in this application so I can easily change the channel if I need to change the channel. Um, the packet size. So at the, at the minute, you ha with with the very basic of transmission and receiving on, on the device, you have to send a packet which is a consistent size. Uh, you could send different size packets, but you you need to implement some kind of packet handling function to do that. Some your class, I should say, to to to, to do that properly. So I'm just using it in its very basic form of I'm only going to send packets of thirty bytes, and the packets going to be very consistent in their meaning at the minute. Just to keep this application very simple, and also. Um, the satellite devices they receive they they t or, or at least this neo 6 module tells you the ground speed at in kil kilometers an hour or knots uh, so the information i'm getting from this uh, most common function is in knots and so this is how i convert it into miles an hour and then there's a couple of things i do to, this is to do with them um, the led flash uh, the led status whether it's green or red is I flat I keep a record of if there's been an error so that I can I know that the LED should be red, and also uh, although um, also the uh, the time it last received information so that if it hasn't received the information in five seconds I can actually make the LED red as well. Uh, this interrupt even though this is the receive application and the transmit application is just for transmitting I've made this interrupt exactly the same code in both the receiver and the transmitter because it just handles uh, when you get in interrupts for um, an error receiving or an error transmitting uh, or when you get data sent um, so for the transmitter we'll, we'll get this data sent interrupt or a data received interrupt for the receiver so 
the, this code it does exactly the same for whether in the transmit or receiver, even though I'm only ever going to get data received or data errors in the receiver and in the transmitter, I'm only going to get data transmit or data errors in the transmitter. Um, but on, on these events, it will do whatever it requires, what requires to do. Um, so in the case of um, transmitting, it will just do this stuff here. Set the set the uh, LED to to green to say that it's actually succeeded in transmitting, uh, and set the error flags to to false as well. Whereas in the receiver, it will now set the LED to green to say that it's received data properly. Uh, but it will also get the data and then tell it to log log the data in a in a, in a log file, which I can then use to set up upload to Google later on. So I've got this right log line. So this is only happens in the receiver. Uh, and all it does is it takes the data which, I, which has been received uh, and converts it into like a Google standard for longitude, latitude. Uh, it does some checks to see if the data looks, looks correct and it flags uh, the data is invalid. Even though the actual satellite data that comes back, it's got this flag in the satellite data which says whether the data is valid or not. But I found out that actually some of the data can still be erroneous. So it just does some validity checks as well before it decides whether or not to write. It only writes it to the log file if it if it passes the validity checks. But here it, it, it will send, it, will just, it just opens up a standard file, appends to the end of the file and any uh, log lines which it gets. And this is the start of the RX program where it sets up the GPO pins for the LED. It initializes the transceiver uh, device, and it does go through the configurations of the transceiver device to put it into like does a standard configuration and puts it into receiver mode, and then it does this reset so that the interrupts are at, before it starts actually going into the actual main loop, uh, all the interrupts have been reset so that it can actually receive interrupts, and the main loop actually doesn't do anything. It sets the LED red by default, so to say that it hasn't received anything by default at first, and it just goes around this loop, uh, which it just says, if I haven't received anything within um, 10 seconds, then it will set the LED to red, but everything else is handled on interrupts, uh, so that I don't, in this main loop, I don't actually handle sending or receiving data, it's just when uh, data is received and interrupt to handle, and then I'll react to that when it happens. And finally, the transmit program is actually very similar to the receive, receive program. So a lot of these constants uh, will be the same. And this interrupt uh, callback uh, is exactly the same. Um, and I've got, even though it's, this doesn't write the log line, because in the interrupt routine, I've got this write, a call to write um, log line. It's just um, got, actually, that's, that's uh, just like dummy code there. Uh, and then it goes into the initialization, so it sets up the GPO pins for the LEDs. It does the same initialization for the tran transceiver, uh, but when it, uh, but in here, it does the configuration for the to send it to make it into a, a transmit uh, state. Uh, and because this one's got the GPS module on it, it opens up the. Uh, a port to the GP, the UART port to the GPS module, and it goes into the main loop, where again by default the LED is set to red before it starts, to to show that it hasn't initiated any communication yet. But this does a bit more in the actual in the in the main loop of the application. So it gets the GPS data um, every every second. It tries to get the GPS data every second. And it decides on whether it's valid data or not. And if the data it's got back isn't valid, then it displays a summary of the satellites um, that, it's, that it's acquiring. However, if it is valid, it won't display the summary of the satellites. It will just set the LED to green. Uh, and it will create a data packet of from, from the information it gets from, uh, from the actual satellite. It'll create uh, the 30 byte data packet, which it then sends uh, via the transceiver to the receiver. 
Right? That's that's all it does. 